Welcome back to Reaction Friday. Today we're going to talk about a very important reaction of aldehydes and ketones that you'll learn in second semester organic chemistry called ketoenol tautomerism. So I'll have a general scheme for this reaction and then some more specific examples and then finish up with a discussion of the mechanism of this reaction. Okay, so let's have a closer look at this reaction here. We've got a molecule on the left, we've got a molecule on the right. And something's missing here. It's something unusual for a reaction in organic chemistry. Notice there's nothing above the arrow, and there's nothing to the left of this reagent. In fact, we only have two molecules present in this whole reaction. We're not adding anything. There's no reagent. We have a molecule on the left just converting to a molecule on the right. And what's interesting about this is this is a molecule on the left. If you count the atoms that you have, and you look at the molecule on the right, and you count the atoms that it have, you realize that they'll actually have the same molecular formula. That is that they are isomers of each other. So one isomer on the left is converting to an isomer of this molecule on the right. And this is the reaction we call tautomerism. These types of constitutional isomers are called tautomers. And if you look at what the bonds we're forming and breaking here, we are breaking a carbon-hydrogen bond. We're breaking the carbon-oxygen pi bond. We're forming a carbon-carbon double bond here. And we're forming an oxygen-hydrogen bond. And this will always be the case for tautomerism. We are always forming and breaking these bonds, no matter what situation you're looking at. This is always going to be the case. This is the pattern for this reaction. Okay, so ketones have uh, a little bit of a, 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 just like Jekyll and Hyde, have they spend most of their time as the keto form, but then every once in a while, every little blue moon, they turn into a, a different form called the enol form. And, and that actually has, just like Jekyll and Hyde, has a very different chemical personality, as you'll learn as you go through organic chemistry too, enols are vastly different from ketones in their chemical reactivity. But these two molecules are related, they're constitutional isomers, they're called tautomers. So we'll just go through some more examples of, of how this works and just give you some specific examples so you can see some of the factors which favor the enol form or disfavor it, uh, depending on the situation. Okay. Um, in general, the keto form is more stable than the enol form. That's because we've got a pretty strong carbon-oxygen pi bond. Um, in general, you look at most keto form favoring the enol form in the vicinity of 5,000 to 1. So for every one equivalent of enol, you've got about 5,000 molecules of, of the keto form. And here's a pretty typical example. Let's look at this ketone here. We're going from the ketone on the left to the keto form in equilibrium with the enol on the right. Now, notice that I drew the enol, the alkene, here, and I didn't draw it on the end. Now, why is that? I mean, is this important? It is, because what we're looking at here is we're, if you remember from organic chemistry 1, you may remember a rule called Zaitsev's rule, where we always wanted to form the more substituted alkene. Well, our alkene here from the enol is, uh, just like an, al an alkene from Zaitsev's rule, going to be more thermodynamically stable the more carbon atoms are actually attached to it. So we always want to favor formation of the more substituted enol, just like we'd favor formation of the more substituted alkene in an elimination reaction. So that's why we form this alkene or this enol and not the one on the end. So in this case, it's about 5001. Look at this slightly different example. Instead of having a cyclohexane, we have a benzene ring. And the enol form of this keto would be the one in which we've broken the carbon hydrogen bond on the end and we formed a new alkene and, and in this case notice that we can only form one enol form we can only remove a hydrogen from this carbon adjacent to the ketone we cannot remove a hydrogen from here so therefore there's really only one enol form that is possible so the second thing i want to point out is that this enol form is actually going to be more stable than an average enol form. And, and why is that? Well, because it is in conjugation with the benzene ring. Uh, and this is a stabilizing factor. So this relationship here might not be 5,000 to 1. It might be a little bit less. It's hard to gauge exactly. But you know, um, you would have a, a, a greater proportion of the enol in this case than you would in this above case. OK, conjugation is a stabilizing thing for alkene. Uh, this middle example here is extremely favorable for the formation of the enol on the right. Uh, so the equilibrium greatly favors the right-hand side and not the left-hand side. And this is unusual for an enol form. Why is this? There must be something that is really stabilizing the enol form here, which is causing the equilibrium to favor the, uh, the to be greatly favored on the right-hand side. And that, 
what's being favored here is this con is the uh, aromaticity of this product. So this product on the right is aromatic. This product on the left is not. And it's for a molecule, that's worth about 30 kilocalories per mole, uh, roughly 120 kilojoules per mole. Uh, that's a huge stabilizing factor. So for that reason, this equilibrium favors this product on the right. And there's one last factor which uh, affects the keto enol tomerism uh, ratio. And that is that if you can uh, form an enol in which you have a, a nice hydrogen bond, such as this, this is called a beta diketone, uh, the enol can uh, hydrogen bond with the adjacent ketone and this will stabilize the enol form relative to a normal keto form. So it, somewhat obscure, but it does come up. Okay. So aromaticity, conjugation, and hydrogen bonding are all factors which can favor the enol form versus the keto form. Um, so the mechanism of this reaction is actually fairly straightforward. You take a ketone, and we're going to invoke a molecule here called HA, which can just be a basic at. It's some general form of uh, an, a proton donor. So a common might, one might be water, let's say. And in our first step, the oxygen lone pair from our ketone or keto or aldehyde, uh, the oxygen will uh, accept a proton from HA, and this will lead to the protonated ketone, which we sometimes call the oxonium ion. And subsequently, uh, whatever A, A minus is or some other base can come in and remove a proton from this carbon, and we will lead to the formation of the enol from here. Uh, so this is how these, uh, we notice we've got a total of five arrows this is how this type of transformation is affected. Um, by protonating the oxygen, we actually make this carbon a lot more acidic than it normally would be. And the reverse of this reaction, you would have the double bond attacking HA being protonated and uh, going through here and then deprotonating it back to give the neutral ketone. So it would happen exactly in reverse as it did in the forward case. Okay, so... Um, HA here, like I said, could be water or some other kind of, ac of uh, acid that's added, such as uh, sulfuric acid or HCl. The rate of this tautomerism is greatly increased as you add strong acid, since you're going to increase the uh, acidity of the alpha carbon when you protonate the oxygen. There's one last little pitfall to be aware of, of, of why, um, you know, how to draw the mechanism of this reaction, and, and this is very important. It's very important not to draw the mechanism of tautomerism like this. Um, and you see how we've got the ketone oxygen is just ripping a proton off of the adjacent carbon and we're forming an alkene. Um, it's very important not to show this because if you actually were to draw or make a model of the ketone, you'd see that the orbitals uh, and the geometry for this reaction actually don't make sense. Um, the p orbitals forming this alkene are pointing out of the page, okay? And that's what this carbon-hydrogen bond, which is in the plane of the page, is supposed to turn into a pi bond. And, and they're actually oriented 90 degrees to each other. So this is not correct. If, if you see this drawn, um, make sure that you uh, familiarize yourself with this different mechanism. OK, so this, this uh, was not actually about the reactions of ketones and enols, but it was just about how they're formed and, um, and some of the factors which favor them or disfavor them. So that's all I had to say about this particular reaction. But if there's something I've missed or something you'd like to comment on or, or need further detail on, I welcome you to leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching and uh, until next time.